Yes, it is true. Halloween continues. Welcome, my friends. I am Barky J. Dog, your host for Halloween, where we take a look at those spooky spooksters, the main monsters, and their movies. This time, we're looking at that wrathful wraith of a rider, that haunted headcase, that spirited spook of Sleepy Hollow, the Headless Horseman. He originates in the legend of Sleepy Hollow, which is actually two different things. First is the legend itself, and then there's the story by Washington Irving. See, Irving heard the legend on his travels around New York State, and turned it into what became the famous story published in a collection of stories back in 1820. Now, the idea of a headless horseman predates both having its murky origins in German folk tales, but for our purposes, we're focusing on the main dude we all know. Sleepy Hollow, it turns out, is a real place about 30 miles north of New York City, settled by Dutch immigrants. The town was originally called Upper Tarrytown, and rebranded itself as Sleepy Hollow for tourism purposes, but this is the actual location where both the legend and the story takes place. The legend goes like this. Back during the Revolutionary War, the British hired a bunch of German mercenaries called Hessians to help fight against the colonists. That's true. During a battle in the vicinity of Sleepy Hollow, one of these guys, a uh, horseman, got his head blown off by a cannonball. Ah! Oh! You know, that's gonna leave a mark. He was reportedly buried in a nearby churchyard in an unmarked grave. Since then, the headless horseman has haunted the area, condemned to ride around looking for his missing head, which he supposedly carries under his arm anyway, but uh, he has to look for it anyhow. He's sometimes depicted as having a jack-o'-lantern for a head, and I like that idea better. Anyway, if he catches you, he'll cut off your head and try it on for size. Not being his own, he has to keep looking. Doesn't do you much good though, does it? So that's your basic story. The uh, one Washington Irving heard in his travels around the state. He was interested in gathering American folk tales, and the Headless Horseman, as well as Rip Van Winkle, came from the same general area. Now we have the story he wrote. In this, a teacher named Ichabod Crane comes to the town of Sleepy Hollow to take up the job as schoolmaster. He's a goofy-looking guy who's not as well-read as he pretends to be, but he has a big ego nevertheless. He's also incredibly superstitious and fears ghosts and witches. He's extremely poor, too, as local teachers were back then. The more things change, the more they stay the same, I guess. Anyway, in his wanderings around town, he encounters the lovely Katrina Van Tassel, a hot, sexy chick who is the only child of Baltus Van Tassel, the wealthiest farmer in the area. Ichabod figures if he can marry Katrina, one day he'll inherit all that wealth. If Katrina is a hot, sexy chick, well, bonus, right? <laughs> But Ichabod has a problem in the form of a rival, Brom Bones, who is everything Ichabod is not. He's handsome and dashing and strong and daring and all of that. And he doesn't like the idea of 
Ichabod moving in on his chick. One night, there's a big harvest celebration at the Van Tassels, with lots of food and music and everything. And towards the end of the evening, there's a round of ghost stories, where Brom Bones regales the crowd with a spooky story about the headless horseman. When everyone else has gone home, Ichabod and Katrina have a conversation, the contents of which are not revealed, although it's implied that she rejects him. On his way home, he has to pass through some spooky woods, and this is where he encounters the horseman. There's a famous chase through the woods to a certain bridge near the churchyard where, if Ichabod can reach it, the horseman will lose his power. Ichabod reaches the bridge and crosses it, but the horseman throws his flaming head at him. The next morning, Ichabod is nowhere to be found. Later, the townsfolk find only his saddle, his hat, and a smashed pumpkin in the road. Ichabod's fate is left unknown. He might have been done away with by the horseman, or he was just so scared by the horseman that he ran away, never to return. Or Brom Bones dressed up as the horseman to scare Ichabod into running away. Or Brom did away with Ichabod. There is a postscript to the story implying Ichabod was alive and living in New York City. But that is discounted in favor of Brom scaring him or the horseman spiriting the schoolteacher away. In any case, Brom marries Katrina. Interestingly enough, this is a story without any heroes or clearly defined villains. See, Ichabod isn't a hero because he's greedy, covetous, and has avarice and a big ego. He's also a bit of a fraud. Brom isn't a hero because he's kind of a bully. Neither are really villains either. The horseman is sort of a villain, but is he real or not? And even Katrina Van Tassel is not a hero. It strongly implied she really wanted Brom and just uses Ichabod to make her boyfriend jealous, playing one off against the other. So, yeah, I guess she's the villain. Heartless cow. All right, now let's get into the movies. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is kind of like a Christmas Carol in that whenever they make a new version of it, they condense things, excise things, or add things that weren't in the story to begin with. And there are a lot of them. I was surprised to find just how many versions there are of this story. Some are good, some are bad, some are meh, and some are outright crapola. Well, let's look at some of the better ones. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow has appeared in the movies since the silent days. There was one in 1896, no less. 1911, 1912, 1921 all saw versions of this story on the screen. In 1922, Will Rogers starred in this adaptation. They add a few things, but overall it's fairly accurate to the story. The chase is done in broad daylight, but that was due to the limitations of the technology at the time. I saw this on Amazon, but it didn't have any music backing it, so it was a bit of a chore to get through. You can find it on YouTube and elsewhere with the soundtrack, though. In 1934, animator Bub Iwerks did a cartoon of the legend. He used to work for Disney, then left to make cartoons like this and Jack Frost and stuff. Then later he returned to Disney and helped develop the multiplane camera, which gave Disney cartoons their quasi 3D look. This is on display in the excellent 1947 version Disney created. Not gonna lie, I love this one. Bing Crosby narrates and sings the story and they even made Ichabod look like Crosby with the big ears and everything. This one is condensed, only like half an hour, so easy to sit through. They add some comedy, of course, but it really captures the look and feel of the story. The chase through the woods is especially well done and cinematic. 
And when the horseman appears, it's iconic imagery. Highly recommended. They usually pair this with a short from Wind in the Willows, uh, narrated by Basil Rathbone. That's like a bonus cartoon to me, though. I'm here for Ichabod. Now let's leap ahead to 1999, when Tim Burton turned his talents to the story. This movie plays fast and loose with the story, but Burton makes it work as only Burton can. The cinematography is first class, really setting up the spooky scene for the picture. Great cast here. Johnny Depp is in top form as Ichabod Crane. Here, he's not a school teacher, but a police constable from New York City sent to Sleepy Hollow to investigate a series of mysterious murders. I really like how he tries to use the scientific method, as he understands it, to investigate crime in an era when forensic science was not taken seriously. There's even a nice sequence in the movie that pays homage to the Disney cartoon. Great cast here, including cameos by Christopher Lee and Commander Koenig himself, Martin Landau. Also, Christina Ricci, Casper uh, Van Dien, Jeffrey Jones, Ian McDermott, Michael Gauch, and Miranda Richardson. Christopher Walken plays the horseman, too. What's not to love? Great picture. In my Sleepy Hollow searching, I also came across this thing called Ichabod from 2004. This is a musical version of the story, and I gotta say, it doesn't follow the story very well at all. In fact, it's gonna be one of these uh, love it or hate it kind of things. Some people will love it, others not so much. This is basically a stage production with cameras pointed at it. The problem here is mainly Ichabod himself. They cast a guy who's way too handsome, which Ichabod wasn't, and he has way too much agency and chutzpah, which Ichabod never had. He's an actual equal to Brom Bones, which doesn't work either. And when they show him being scared of spooks and stuff, you don't buy it. There's one scene where he's uh, confronted by the horseman, and he's all, I can still change my ways! I can still change my ways! Dude, you're Ichabod Crane, not Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> uh, I'll give it this. As a stage production, the sets are great. The music is alright, too. There's only, like, three songs, and the best one is about Ichabod. Ichabod, what's in a name that's plain like John or James? He's Ichabod, he's more than a crane. <laughs> I, I guess I like that one. I'm, I'm still humming it anyway. <laughs> Now, if you want to see a really accurate version, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow from 1999 is your best bet. Obviously riding the coattails of the Tim Burton film, but this one from the Hallmark Channel. Yeah, Hallmark. <laughs> uh, it's really good. It's, uh, it's actually surprisingly good. Cast is great, especially Ichabod and Baltus. Really like the guy playing Baltus. It follows the story well. They do add a few things to pad it out, but they make sense. One thing they add is Baltus showing his daughter that Ichabod is unsuitable. He connives to do it in a very clever way, and this is why she rejects him later. It works, fits well, love it. And finally, from 1980, we have a TV movie that's a lot of fun. This plays fast and loose with the story, adds an extra ghost or two, and even gives us a happy ending, but the cast makes it all worth it in my book. Meg Foster plays Katrina, and Paul Sand appears as a friend of Brown Bones. Brom is played by, get this, Dick 
Butkus. That's right, the football player turned actor. Best of all, we have none other than a young Jeff Goldblum as Ichabod Crane. <laughs> God, he's perfect. You gotta see this one. Sadly, it's never been released on DVD, but it was put out on VHS, and you may find it on YouTube. It's a real hoot. So, if you can only watch one version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow this Halloween, which one should you go for? Well, the Tim Burton film is excellent, a real spook fest, and easy to find. The Disney cartoon is widely available too, but I'd say go with the Hallmark movie. No, seriously. Uh, it's, it's great. Faithful to the story, great cast, it just works. Little harder to find, but worth it. That's my recommendation anyway. Hey, it's just my opinion. Don't lose your head over it. <laughs> Join me next time as Halloween continues. <laughs>